Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine entering this first weekend of August of 2020. And of course, that just means that a lot of the focus has turned to the reefs, the wrecks, the rocks, the rubble fields for folks in the middle of summer looking for some of those doormat fluke. People like Lou DeFazio and places like the rattlesnake put the two together. Lou let me know on Tuesday that the rattlesnake, Monmouth County on North Jersey's coast, that's where he was with Captain Chad aboard Tagged Fish Charters on Tuesday. It was the last drift of the day, Lou told me. And actually he had uh, hooked up with a bergal that he brought up. And rather than just throw that bergal back, he rigged that bergal, put it back down, and right before the final buzzer, Lou brought this 12 and a half pounder aboard. A great doormat. Not the only doormat of the week. We've got a bigger one. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Buzzer beater. I even had a buzzer beater going out on Wednesday. It wasn't as big as Lou's, but that's what happens. You just got to put your time in and continue and, uh, and sift through the door, the, the, the throwbacks in many ways. We were out at Axel Carlson. Heard uh, conflicting reports middle of the week, but you had to work for it. Wednesday morning, the drift wasn't so good. Then the south wind came up in the afternoon and pushed you pretty hard. We were using a drift sock. A lot of throwbacks in that stretch of water. Um, I would end up the day having more success going with an eight ounce bucktail, a Berkeley bucktail with the gulp, of course. But maybe I should have gone the spoon route. That's one of the things that I heard. That's how Sabrina Bowen, she limited out over the weekend fishing out of Barnegat Bay on the outgoing tide. She was fishing with Captain Tom Crespo of Off the Hook. Sabrina was using an M3 tackle spoon and the gulp for that good fish. The spoons have become very popular in the last couple of years, especially on that, that teaser, on that dropper above your bucktail. Adds a little bit of flash. I hear about them being used quite a bit along the ocean grounds, not so much in the in, uh, inlets or back bays, but it's worth a shot. But again, what we're hearing now, at this point in the summer, good structure is your best bet. That's the word for the week. Keep moving around. Uh, be willing to lose a couple of rigs. Try to stay as vertical as possible. But those bucktails, and if you don't want to lose the bucktails, go with a sinker with two droppers. Uh, my buddy Jeff Merrill was doing that with the, uh, with the gulps this week. But be prepared to lose a few wherever you're going. In fact, down in, uh, in Cape May County, Jeff with Hands to Bait and Tackle checked in with a report this week telling of some of the best summer flounder action off of Cape May that he has seen since around the time of Superstorm Sandy. Now, Jeff said anglers are reporting back from Wildwood and Cape May reef sites with good numbers of keepers to five pounds. The deeper waters off Delaware Reef Site 11 are also holding fish. The deeper, uh, uh, deeper waters uh, are definitely the places to be. You might consider the old grounds at this point. Um, one crew was reporting 40 keepers at Delaware Reef Site 11 with a few double headers. And in that deeper water, you're going to want four to six ounce bucktails tipped with a white gulp. That was what Jeff suggested. Go take different colors. You might put strips of meat. You might try strips of salmon, fresh salmon, salmon belly soaked in finescence. Always a good bet. Um, Jeff said the top hook strip baits were also working well, so keep that in mind. If you catch a, uh, a chub mackerel, Spanish mackerel, also make good strip baits. Um, Jeff says the anglers are looking for buoys, are looking around the buoys and the bunker pods near the reef sites. That's where they're also seeing a lot of cobia. In fact, they're seeing more cobia off of uh, Cape May County right now than they're actually hooking into. I guess a lot of folks are having trouble getting into them. Uh, keep your live well well stocked. You've got a three bluefish limit, so maybe put three snappers in there. The uh, Kobe, I love live baits. Also live eels. A lot of folks tell me about the live eels. Keep a bucktail armed and ready to go. Maybe a bomber, black bomber, SP minnow. Just make sure you stay rigged and ready. There's small mahi are starting to show along that structure as well. Dave DeGangi, he dropped me a note the other day, said uh, he found some really good action in the McCree's Shoal area. And it's not just on McCree's Shoal, but you might have to move around. He said he found a triple limit of nine keepers on lumps uh, uh, on a lump in about 40 to 50 feet of water and those ocean water temperatures now hovering around 80 and over 80 degrees it's that deep water where the fluke are going to get down deep 
cool off and probably have a little bit better action for you. Now, in those deeper waters of the rare, and this is about the time people have August circled on their calendar, say, this is the time I'm heading to the deep water on the rare, because that's where the jumbos are. Good, good possibility at this point. In that deep water on the rare, and John Cardassi, he told me he hit Chapel Hill Channel along the edges for shorts. He made the move to Sandy Hook Channel, where he got a workout on those big cow nose rays that are on the prowl. Now, John didn't have much to report from Sandy Hook Reef, but he noted the friends are working over that sticky stuff around the rattlesnake and also around the Shrewsbury rocks as well. Now, you will see plenty of rays in the water this time of year, whether you're in the surf line or just a little bit offshore. Um, if you've got good polarized glasses, uh, it's an easy way to see these big brown shapes moving through the water. It'll also help you spot some of those cobia. Keep an eye out. Uh, the polarized glasses are great, whether you choose uh, the flying fishermen or the, the coasters or the smiths. Get yourself a good set of polarized glasses so you can see so much more in the water. Uh, and again, I'm saying keep yourself armed and ready. Have a spinning outfit ready to go with a bucktail or spinning outfit ready to go uh, with some of those thin metals. While we were working the waters uh, just off of Manasquan, uh, middle of this week, you could see the Spanish mackerel launching out of the water. So it's nice to have a rod and reel ready to go. Take it, snap, and you're ready to go. Of course, don't forget in those northern waters off of Monmouth County, the porgy bite has been fantastic this season. Some fish even being caught from surf casters in Sandy Hook. Many folks are chumming and clamming and going for those porgies. Captain Joe on the sauerkraut runs out of Leonardo, for example. He's been putting folks like Jade Vince here into uh, quite a few double headers and filled fish boxes full of those porgies. Um, I'll tell you what, if you've ever gotten one of those giant porgies and you can steam it or fry it or cook it but served whole, it's a fantastic fish. Not too many porgies to be found in Ocean, Atlantic, and especially down in Cape May County. Uh, you do have some fluke in the wash though, uh, especially the farther you go so, uh, in Southern Ocean County, thinking Island Beach and Long Beach Island, that's where it seems like you have the better uh, beach structure where those fluke are, are congregating. That's where we're getting some of the better reports of uh, some fluke in the surf. Lou DeFontenay, he had a 19 and a half incher that weighed nearly three pounds, caught that in the Island Beach surf on Gulp, according to the crew at Gulpies, uh, uh, Grumpies, I'm sorry. And of course, uh, the one thing that we found out this week is that certain areas of Island Beach State Park have just reopened to some surf casters. And I'm understanding those fluke were in there hungry and they weren't expecting anybody to show. Of course, you know I love chasing those Spanish mackerels at dawn in the surf throwing tins. Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle said that in addition to the fluke, in the Brigantine Wash. You can also get a shot at those Spanish mackerel as well, like Nick A did here. Of course, Ocean City beaches, down Strathmere, Avalon, and the Wildwoods. Good amount of kingfish hitting fish bites, clams, uh, um, also blood worms. Good eating if you're looking to generate a good family fish fry in the weekend ahead. Now, uh, in this weekend ahead, their midweek forecast from NOAA weather indicates that we have a little heave headed our way in the next few days. Inshore three to fives, even three to sixes by Sunday on the inshore waters. Offshore from the Hudson to the Baltimore, a little dicier. Three to four Thursday, but expected to build three to six for Friday through Sunday, up to eights by Monday. A little pressure system coming through and of course that hurricane ripping uh, uh, in towards the uh, Florida area uh, earlier this week. So we want to keep an eye on the forecast. We're getting into that time of year of course, but especially if you're trying to plan your offshore weather window, that's where you want to be looking at that NOAA weather forecast, rolling the dice and doing the best you can. But if we do have a little bit of a swell or a heave on the inshore waters in the weekend ahead, might be time to head in the back. If you're in South Jersey, maybe try to pick up some fiddler crabs someplace or shedder crabs on a top jig, work that structure, those bridge piling, see if you can't find some sheep's head in the back. Maybe it's time to head up Barnegat Bay and take that first trip, look for some of those blowfish out near the research buoy, uh, heavy chum uh, and, and bits of clam to get down. Or of course you can always choose to get on a bigger boat, a bigger party boat. I know those party boats a little bit more comfortable, leave the driving to somebody else to get out there. That idea worked for Carl Hart. He jumped aboard a long range trip aboard the Voyager out of Point Pleasant the other day. The boat traveled to the land of giants around Nantucket, Nantucket Shoals. Carl was rewarded with this whopper of 14.1 pound doormat fluke. That's a flukosaurus status. He brought that in and checked it in with the folks at Fisherman's Supply. There are always 
plenty of freshwater options for you as well. Uh, before uh, Smile and Phil shut down the WMAs uh, this week, some guys like uh, Donald Dyson, he was out looking around for a place that didn't require the WMA access. He was kayaking on Salem Canal and he was into some of the largemouth up to three and three quarter pounds. But again, Smile and Phil, he bestowed upon us the reopening of the wildlife management areas this week. So folks who were out couldn't get out, uh, couldn't get access to some of their favorite waters or lands. Uh, you do have the wildlife management areas reopening this week. Freshwater. One guy I know who's always dialed into the freshwater access, that's my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, I'm starting to feel like I can give you the same fishing report week after week here just throughout this summer. You know, the, the high temps are still uh, keeping things really at bay. You know, the crowds are big, the fishing's tough, the water's warm. But some guys are still out getting fish. You just have to be a little bit more patient and, and do, use a little strategy to get some fish. You know, there's things like in the river, you know, the water's warm. Uh, I was talking to Tim Keeber. He said water's up in the, in the 80 degrees, mid-80s here in the Delaware. Well, you got to look for parts where the water's moving fast and it's building up that oxygen. Also look for where tributaries are feeding into your ponds and creeks, going to give you a little bit more oxygen in that water and it might even put some bait in that area as well. So fish will be concentrated in, in those hard to reach areas, but they're probably even the same areas they're going to be away from some of these tourists that are out in our, our lakes right now. But folks are catching some fish and I do want to share some success stories with you. We had uh, Ryan Swoop out with a new PB, he got a nice four pounder in the river. So again, those river Rivers are producing, but make sure you look for those areas where you can build up some oxygen. Also, Nick Canestra, he got a seven plus pounder down in the Chesapeake, the northern Chesapeake, right where the Susquehanna flows in. Again, we're looking for areas where the, where the water is mixing up, the oxygen's high, and you can get on some of these great fish too. Also, Paul Chickarine got a beautiful walleye out of Lake Wallenpompak. Uh, again, you're, you got to get in those, those deeper areas where the, where the water's cooler, the oxygen's higher, and that's going to get you into some better fish. Now, a great success story too, uh, we've been talking about getting into some catfish and carp in the summertime. Here we have a young Easton Schwamm got into a beautiful PB carp uh, on one of the local lakes here and we've been talking about you know getting into some of these more lethargic fish the catfish the carp and stuff like that they're easy to get just throw some bait out some some livers some corn and you're going to get us some great fish and yeah it's not the big bass or the striper but it's a lot of action you can get in, in this time of year lots of fishing going on guys get out and get on them from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy as I joked before, those wildlife management areas are once again reopened. Of course, my birthday was two weeks ago, so Smile and Phil couldn't take that away from me. But if you've been frustrated by the loss of access, buck up, get back on it. COVID knocked us down, but it certainly did not knock us out. Case in point, uh, the folks at Bait and Hook in Sicklerville, they let me know that that Bernie Perrant fishing challenge is going on. It's going on strong this year, albeit by a somewhat virtual experience this year. It runs all August long. Uh, you Flyers fans would appreciate it. I'm sure being a part of uh, a Vesna, uh, Vesna Award winner, Hall of Famer, Broad Street Bully, a tournament with Bernie Perrant's name. You can check in with the folks at Bait and Hook in Sicklerville. You can also go to events dot snyderhockey.org slash virtual dash fishing to get all the information about that Ed Snyder, Ed Snyder Hockey Foundation tournament going on all August long. Hey, the, the uh, August edition is out. Just came, I just picked it up today. Just came in my mail. Uh, you subscribers, you should get it this week. You can go out to uh, any of the tackle shops, the convenience stores, the newsstands, the Wawa, wherever. Make sure you pick that up. There's a great article in there from Nick Honachewski on pot hop and mahi. In fact, a great cover from Roger Muller of New Jersey of an underwater mahi shot. Just beautiful. Uh, when we were heading out of Manasquan today, those, those pots uh, just around the Axel Carlson, you could start seeing the high flyers just a couple of miles from shore. Start looking for them. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody had asked about those pots. Uh, where can I find those high flyers? A lot of times out at the reef sites, the farther offshore you go, you'll find them. But we are in that time of year where you could start doing a little bit of that pot hopping. You might find trigger fish along the line. 
uh, dropping some uh, rigs and jigs down for the trigger fish. Some of the, the, the chicken mahi will hang out along those, those pot lines. And of course the cobia as well. Hopefully those mahi will be setting up strong as ever uh, in the next week or so, uh, maybe even by this weekend, because a couple of the, the, the last couple of summers, we've really had a phenomenal inshore mahi bite along those string pots and along some of the buoys as well. So look for anything in the water that will hold and hide bait. Good chance some type of predator will be around. Also in that August edition, our story is a great feature on swordfish. There's a light tackle artificial concept for you guys in North Jersey looking for those porgies. And I have another update on the Northeast Striped Bass Study for you folks in Delaware and Cape May County. Eric Burnley has a spotlight on Delaware Bay. It's all in that August edition. Keep an eye on the weather for the weekend. Remember, you're not going to hit those good fluke unless you're prepared to lose a few jigs and rigs on the wrecks. Keep it in mind and live it. Catch them up. We'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.